Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are good. So in today's video, I have come here with 10 Python code snippets that can help us write more professional codes. So let's get started. So at first we will see the use of doc streams for documentations. So doc stream in Python serve as documentation strings for functions, modules and classes. And they are enclosed inside the triple codes as you can see here and it basically specifies the descriptions of what the particular piece of code does. As you can see here, I have specified here that this function takes two arguments and return their sum. Okay, and then when I execute the code, so the sum will happen. So doc streams serve as a documentation for that particular function, modules or classes that what that particular piece of code does. Okay, we'll move to the next. That is the use of is instance function, which is used to check the type of an object. So as you can see, I have taken an object, my underscore object and I've specified it to an integer value that is 42. And now using the conditional statement, I will check it. So what will happen when I'm checking it, if is instance, my object, I'm giving this first my object name, my object, and then I'm giving the class to check for it. First, I'm giving the string class str. So what will happen if we'll satisfy this, then this is instance method will throw an true. And based on that, this if condition will be true. And then the below code, if it is true, then the below code that is print hello world will get printed. Okay. Then in the elf elf, I'm checking that if the object is of integer class, then one will get printed. And in the else, normal will get printed. Okay. So when I'll execute it, so one will get printed because it is obvious this 42 is, is an integer value. So it is of the integer class. So that's why one is getting printed. So whenever we are to check for the type of that object, so we can use this is instance method to check it. We'll move to the next that is the use of the try and accept blocks to handle the errors. Most of us know about this, but we don't use it. So as you can see in the try block, I have written the code in which I think the error could occur. That is four divided zero. Then for handling it, I have used the accept block and in this I have written exception. I want to handle an exception as E as an alias E and then I'm printing that an error occurred and I'm printing the E also and then the rest of the code that will be in your program. You will write that and when I'll execute it, you will see that yes, the error has been occurred division by zero error it is and the rest of code is also getting printed. So continue the normal flow of your program you can use try and accept block. This is very beneficial. Okay, so we'll move to the next that is the use of with to open a file. So why we have to use the with? Because this is the latest way in this way when we are using a when we are accessing a file or we are opening a file. We don't have to close it manually. It automatically close it at the end of the when we'll go out of this range of this file, it will automatically close the file. So there are less chances of the file to be get corrupted or get some viruses or errors. So that's why we should use whenever we want to access a file. So we should use this one. So I have already created a file. I'll show you that file. This yes, I have already created a file file.txt in which I have stored. How are you? Now I will print it because I have uh, used the access mode read over here and I'm used the function read. So it will just extract the letters from there. How are you? And it will print over here. Okay. And you will see I have not manually closed the file because I have used the width open as F and I am doing the work inside this file identification. So that's why we don't need to close the file manually it will it has been closed automatically now we'll move ahead now we'll see list comprehension now whenever we want to do a two three lines of coding for the our list or to do something in our list something manipulation in the list or you want to do something in all of 
the elements present in our list, you can use list comprehension. This is the best way. Now, in this program, I'm doing a square of this, all the elements, one, two, three, and four. So I have used the list comprehension. In the list comprehension, first you have to give the output that what you want. So you want to do the square of all the elements. So X, double asterisk, and then two. This will specify the square of each element. Okay. Now we have to apply to all the elements. That's why we are using the loop for X in my list. And then we have given the condition that if X will be greater than zero, then only this will, the square will happen. And this spaces, if you'll see, I've given one space after each one, after the output, I've given one space, then the loop is going on. Then after that, our space, the conditional statement I have given. So this space specifies the termination of that particular thing. Okay. And then I'll print the new list and the square has been printed. Okay. We'll move ahead to the enumerate. Now the enumerate method help us to loop by the use of the indexes also means whenever you want to loop using the index and the value, then you will use the enumerate method. It enumerates means it enumerates over the index and the value both together. So I have a list, my list over here. So I'm using that list only. So what I'm using for I comma value in enumerate and in the enumerate, I've given my iterator that is my underscore list. And then I'm printing I and the value. And you will see that one, two, three, four are the values and zero, one, two, three are the indexes. So it is specifying the both first the index zero and at which the value is one. So one is going on. Okay. So this is also a good way whenever you want to iterate the index also with the help of with the value, then you can use the enumerate method. Okay. We'll move ahead. Then whenever we want to iterate over two iterators together. So what we can do, we can use the zip method. So as you can see, I have taken two lists, list one and list two. So for X comma Y in zip, and I've given the name of the two lists that is list one and list two, and I'm printing both of this X and Y. What will happen? This will iterate over both of the lists together at the same time. As you can see, one, five, two, six, three, seven, four, eight. Okay. We'll move ahead to the join method. Now, whenever we want to put or join or concatenate our string with something between them, between the alphabets, then we can use the join method. So first you will take our string in which we want to do something uh, in which we want to use the join method for concatenating things. Then you will create a variable and then you will give a blank uh, single quotes. Then you'll use dot join and then you'll provide the name of the string which you want to concatenate and then you'll print new string. Now you'll see nothing has not happened, but when you will put a space over here, you will see this space is applied to all of the letters between just, you can see there is a space between H E L L O like this, or if you want to provide a special character like comma and thing, then that will be put inside that strings between that two alphabets. Okay. So this is also a good way. Now, logging module. Now this is used to log events and errors. Basically logging in Python is used to capture and store valuable information such as the errors, events and program flow, which help us in debug, which further help us in debugging and troubleshooting. As you can see, first I've imported the module logging and then the basic info config is the function present in this logging and in which I have specified the file name example dot log and then I have specified the level that login dot info the level should be info so all the information thing and the above things which will be occurred in this program will get stored and then I have used the info method to give an to store a thing that is to store an string that is an event occurred. So when I'll execute this program, so a file will be created. I'll show you here example.log. 
in the same directory where you have kept your file and you will see that info root and event occurred has been stored here okay so this is also very useful for for the debugging and troubleshooting as the all the information related if an event has occurred or an error has been uh, occurred then they will be get stored in that file if you have specified the file name okay then we'll move to the last that is use the asset statements to check for expected uh, behavior that error will come or not so here you can see i have specified a method over here that is divide and i have taken two parameters a and b now using the assert statement i have checking that b not equal to zero and if this will be false means b will be zero then this cannot divide by zero will get printed and then we are returning a divided b and i have given two 20 and 4. so first when the uh, when this is not satisfying then nothing will get printed but when i'll change the parameter argument over here from 4 to 0 because b is at the last so i will specify 0 at last so now we'll see an assertion error is coming that is cannot divide by 0 so in this way we can know that okay the error will the error is here only so for checking for the expected errors for the expected behaviors that you are thinking that okay in this line an error could come so you can use the asset statements so that's it for today thanks for watching the video we'll see you in the next video